Welcome to our traditional worship service offered on this day, Wednesday, May 27th. May God bless and keep you as you join with us. And for those of our members who have received the email with the lyrics, those that have a hymnal at home, we are beginning our service with hymn number 906, O Day of Rest and Gladness, all four verses. We continue with these select portions of divine service, setting three. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father, for you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join me in confessing our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue today in this time between Ascension and the coming weekend of celebrating Pentecost with the theme, Jesus is your living water, based upon the words of John 7, verses 37 and 38. You may remember almost 40 years ago now, in 1981, American families were introduced to the board game Trivial Pursuit. Almost 40 years ago. You may remember the game well. It was a general knowledge game with six different categories with questions spanning geography, entertainment, history, art and literature, science and nature, sports and leisure. Now, if I ask you, what is the longest river in the world, how would you answer? The correct answer is the Nile River at just over 4,100 miles long. Our country from north to south is barely 2,600 miles long. If I asked you, which river in the world discharges the most fresh water into our world's oceans, what would your answer be? The correct answer is the Amazon River in South America. It discharges 20% of all the fresh water in the world into our world's oceans. If I asked you which river in the world has the greatest amount of commercial traffic and flows into the world's largest hydroelectric plant, how would you answer? Well, the correct answer would be the Yangtze River in China. Now, if I asked you which river in the whole world is the greatest, what would your answer be? Well, the question might sound a little confusing. The greatest river in the world? It doesn't exactly fit into the Nile or the Amazon or the Yangtze. The greatest river in the world doesn't hold any water like those rivers do. And yet, it is a river you can freely drink from and you are washed in it. The greatest river in the world is described in Psalm 46. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. So it's the greatest river in the world because it flows from Jesus Christ. And it flows through you and me and every Christian in the world. Now while attending the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem, Around the time of year that we call October, Jesus stood up and taught with a loud voice. 
If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. God the Father sent his Son to fix the broken connection between heaven and earth. And that's what Jesus was getting at when he stood up during the Feast of Tabernacles and invited people to drink from him. But not everyone who heard his words were so certain of what Jesus was offering. The Apostle John records some of the hearers' reactions to Jesus' statement. In John 7, beginning at verse 40, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Others said, He is the Christ. Others asked, How can the Christ come from Galilee? Does not the scripture say that the Christ will come from David's family and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? The people were divided because of Jesus. Knowing Jesus as the Bible describes him is always a blessing to you and to me. It's never a burden. Listening to the words of Jesus are always a blessing to you and me, never a burden. Listen once more to what Jesus said about the river of life. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow a river of living water. Now, the river of life is not great and it is not awesome only because it flows from Jesus. It is great and it is awesome because it flows from the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ to you and to me and to every Christian so that as we are so richly blessed, washed in its waters, we are blessed to be a blessing to others. Jesus included this teaching in the larger teaching about the work of the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit would do from Pentecost and until Jesus returned again. Of course, the Holy Spirit had been working for generations, bringing people to confessions of faith and belief in God the Father. No one in Jesus' time could believe in him without the work of the Holy Spirit. But after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit would equip believers so that they would be a blessing to all those around them. And for the disciples at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit blessed them with the gift of tongues, being able to speak in languages that all the people in Jerusalem could understand, the wonders of Jesus. For you, that blessed gift from God's Holy Spirit may be the gift of hospitality. Maybe you have a special way through that spiritual gift of making people feel at home in your own house. For others, the gifts of the Holy Spirit may be gifts of encouragement, leadership, or showing mercy. And these are just a few of the many recorded in the Bible, gifts of the Holy Spirit that is promised to well up inside of you as a river eager to flow and even eager to burst over its banks and wash over others in a refreshing stream. Isn't that promise worth remembering when you're feeling a little down any day of your life? So looking back for our students, so you didn't get all the grades you wanted to get through your four years of high school or your four years of college. So you didn't get to take the vacation you were hoping for. Maybe you were passed over for a promotion again. Maybe it seems everyone around you is taking pity on you. But as the Bible teaches, we are not to be pitied. Christians are not to be pitied. Not when Jesus says that the river of life flows through us. Think of it this way.
The Nile River may stretch for over 4,100 miles. But many people cover that distance in a single year through their travels. Daily travels to the office, to school, doing errands, and even vacations. Think of all the people you meet in all of those travels all of your days. And think of all the opportunities you receive to be an influence as a child of God. All the opportunities you have to be a blessing to others in the name of Jesus. Now the Amazon River may discharge 20% of all the world's fresh water into its oceans. But what is that compared to the words of eternal life you can release into your family and community and nation and world, a world right now that is choking on fear, the fear of what is called COVID-19. You have the words of eternal life given through the scriptures to be a blessing to all who live with daily fear. The Yangtze River may be the busiest, and it may push more water in the world's largest hydroelectric plant than any in the world. But the energy of the Holy Spirit is also pushing through you to cheer up the lonely and bring a message of hope to the lost souls with the good news, the saving news about Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior for sinners, the river of life. You don't have to go to Africa, South America, or China to see what some would call the greatest river of all. The greatest and most awesome and most powerful river in the whole world, in fact in all creation, flows from Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit through his word to you and to me, and it flows through you and through me to all. Who can you bless today with words spoken, maybe over a phone call? Who can you bless today with the blessings you've received from a life of following Jesus? Who needs to be told where the greatest, most awesome, most powerful river in the world is and point them to Jesus? Bless them with what the Bible has taught you about Jesus. Bless them with the words Jesus gives as the only source of the rivers of eternal life and living water. Bless them with these and many more words and teachings about Jesus recorded in the Bible so that they too can join us in being a blessing to others. Pointing the lost pointing the thirsty to Jesus Christ who said, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Amen. We bow our heads and continue with the prayers of the church, and then following those prayers, we speak the words together, the Lord's Prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you overcame death. You opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may also be raised from death of sin by your life-giving Spirit through our risen Lord Jesus. Almighty God, grant to your church the continued outpouring of your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that come down from above that your word may never be bound, but have free course in the world, and be preached to us and through us to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that all may be washed in the rivers of life and remain in the steadfast faith in one Lord and one Savior, Jesus Christ. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, you are our only help in every time of need. Look with your favor upon all your servants who are in the hospital at this time, especially those we know and name from our hearts. Assure them all of your mercy. Deliver them from the temptations of the evil one. Give them patience and strength and comfort 
If it please you, restore them to health or grant them an extra measure of your grace to accept this tribulation with courage and with hope through our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God, merciful Father, let now the hearts of your people not despair, but always sustain and comfort us through the living waters of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through faith in Jesus, give strength to all who attend to the sick. Bring consolation through the living water of Jesus to those who mourn. And through the faith that comes from the living waters in Jesus, protect all those in the medical profession who render assistance, aid, and comfort, that they may have your words to speak to the many who are in need. Support all of us as we each day defend the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And grant to those who have been entrusted with the authority of government your spirit of godly wisdom, that there may be in our land and in all lands justice and peace. Bless especially the members of our nation's military in all of their selfless acts of service for others. Shelter them with your protection and grant them daily strength to perform their assigned duties with honor, courage, and strength. Risen and ascended Jesus, in your holy name, we lift up our prayers to our Father in heaven and continue to ask in these days and every day, your spirit would turn more and more sinners to call upon your name, to humble themselves, to pray and seek the Father's face, to turn from their wicked ways and live so that their prayers may also be lifted in your name and be heard by our Father in heaven, that their sins will be forgiven, that rivers of life and waters of healing may flow to them and through them to the world. Through you, our Lord Jesus Christ, as we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the words of the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please join me with hymn 644 as we sing together the verses, The Church's One Foundation.
pass along two announcements today. A reminder to our members of Holy Cross and Daughter Lutheran Church Missouri Synod congregations in the Saginaw area and sister Missouri Synod congregations throughout our circuit. We offer drive up communion today, Wednesday the 27th from 12 to 2 p.m. if you would simply drive up to the entrance of our school off court and Fayette and keep in your prayers the plans for the reopening of our sanctuary for worship beginning June 7th and June 8th. Keep in your prayers the letter and the requests that were sent out to everyone who comes that we may come with hearts other focused to keep in our own practice the best practices to guarantee a safe environment for all who hunger and thirst for the living waters that we find and experience together in this house of worship and prayer gathered around word and sacrament. May God bless and turn our hearts that we may daily be other focused and come to receive the blessing 